Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform, please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing the rarest version of one of my favorite watches. Launched in 1997 and made in only 100 pieces, this is the yellow gold variant of the Vacheron Constantin Saltarello Jump Hour Retrograde. So back in 1997, three versions were launched, rose, white, and yellow gold. The first two were made in 200 pieces each. Yellow gold, the most traditional of golds, was made in only 100 pieces, and you can see this is number 75 of that run. This watch has it all. The case, which is a cushion profile, is 36 millimeters in diameter. It is 8.6 millimeters thick, quite slim given the complication and automatic winding. 43.1 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. It has a 19 millimeter spacing between the lugs. This watch is traditionally sized, which means it's suitable for men and women. It's a unisex option. Note the lugs come nowhere near the edge of my wrist, and it's super flat as a Vacheron dress watch should be. This one fits easily underneath the cuff. I can recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 13 centimeters circumference, and again, my wrist is 16 centimeters circumference. The strap, as you can see, is a brand new Vacheron Constantin factory strap, calfskin on the bottom, large rectangular scale alligator leather on the top, a sort of honey brown with some bolstering to give it volume, a monotone stitch, a sheer cut side showing the layers of leather. You can see the condition is outstanding. And there is a little Maltese cross matching yellow gold pin buckle because Vacheron's logo is the Maltese cross. What I love about this example is that it is in the best condition of any Saltarello I have ever encountered. If you're online looking for a reference illustrative of how these watches looked when they left the factory, this particular example right now as I'm recording it is the closest thing you can find to a brand new Saltarello. The tiered lugs, which are angular and stepped, still have wonderfully sharp flanks and the breaks between the flanks are well defined. Everything's in high polish. The break from the bezel down to the mid case is sharp, as is the multiple step from the case back to the mid case. Take a look at the engraving on the case flank. Number 75 of 100, that's usually the first thing that goes when these are over refinished or refinished too many times. We have a Maltese cross on the crown, which is slightly recessed. When we turn the watch over, you can see on the reverse side the name Saltarello still sharply engraved into the case back. You can also see things like the serial number and the reference remain clear, distinct, uh, along with the hall marking, which is easy to see and still quite deep. Again, those tend to be lost with time and refinishing. Let's start on the dial side. The movement's special, but the dial is what you'll see, and that's a good thing. This is real Roselay the Guilloche. Even a lot of haute horlogerie brands today will stamp their Guilloche dials. This incredible sunburst rayon which emanates out from underneath the retrograde hand. This is real rose lathe engine turning. It says hand guilloche, because all of this is done by a cam-based engraver that is guided by the hand of a guilloche, a specialized artisan who works on pieces like this exclusively. Now you can see there's a cutout for the name and the city of origin, as well as for the scale of the retrograde. You can see that the hand is fluted down its center. We also have applique diamond style minute indices and applique minutes. Let's take a quick look at how this works. So it is a retrograde and a jump hour. And how much do you love that Art Nouveau font used for the jump hour display? That's drawn from the watches that largely contribute to the aesthetic of this watch. Not Art Deco, but the era that came before it in the first quarter of the 20th century. That's really the inspiration for the Saltarello. You can see there's also a polished and faceted yellow gold frame for that jumping hour. It's an absolute pleasure. A super dynamic watch with a jumper that operates simultaneously with retrograde and jump hour action. And how much do you love that open nine? Now turning it all over here, what we have is Vacheron caliber 1100 slash 2. This movement originally debuted in 1967 as the JLC 920, which was built on commission 
to the Holy Trinity by Jeger Lecoult, which agreed to never sell the movement to any other brand and never to use it in its own watches. So this has only ever been used by Patek, Vacheron, and AP. In the modern era, Vacheron and AP have built the movement in-house. A lot of distinctive features here, but let's start with what makes this one special. You can see the Geneva Hallmark on both the balance cock and on the base plate. So this is Geneva Hallmark finishing. You can appreciate that no Audemars Piguet version of this movement will ever have the imprimatur of Geneva watch. Watchmaking. Now the rotor, as well as the mass here, freehand engraved and skeletonized. And you can see that the engraving is as intricate as anything you will find on the finest engraved watches, including from Patek Philippe. We have the Maltese cross within the rotor. You can see that the movement itself is extensively hand finished with broad, light, luminous Cote de Genève. Engine turning on the base plate. Every screw head is black polished with a chamfered slot and circumference. You can see that the regulator, as well as the stud hold, for the hairspring, black polished. The ratchet wheel features solarization and the other wheels feature satination. And if you look at the edge of the bridges, let's see the best angle for that's probably here. You can see that the anglage is true hand-finished mirrored anglage. Technically speaking, it's an automatic winder with a 40-hour power reserve. It's got a vintage 19,800 vibration per hour beat rate. It pivots on 38 joules and as you can see, the rotor runs all the way around the movement. One side has the mass, but the rotor runs all the way around. The rotor is actually made of beryllium, and it pivots on four ruby rollers that sit at the four corners of the movement. And as a result, the bridge will not come in contact with the rotor, and the rotor will not come in contact with the base plate. And these things can be sunken very close together thanks to the ruby rollers and the full annular beryllium ring. Uh, this movement can be made super slim. The base caliber here is only 2.4 millimeters thick. That's one of the virtues of this old JLC 920 Bausch. It was then, and it is now, super thin. All of this is 30 meters water resistant, but if you really want to get wet and wild with your Vacheron, I recommend an overseas. This is for good times, high times, high and dry. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.